I grew up in, a, in an environment where classical art, Greek art, um, medieval art, European um, classical art was the way. So painting and sculpture are what I first was aware of. And I really was quite ignorant about all the rest. <laughs> In high school, I was lucky enough to have an art master from Edinburgh, who was an actual painter. And I had him from ages 13 to 16, when I was really focusing on art more than anything else. He gave me, I suppose, all my earliest technique and information that I still use today. It was my, my really first learning was directly from this art master. After high school, I got accepted into the Hornsey College of Art in London. I had always intended to be a fine artist. That was the only thing I knew. But while there, I got introduced, obviously, to a lot of other dimensions of art that I didn't know existed. You know, always everything from graphics to jewelry design to um, pottery, of course, um, fashion textiles. Well, how that part played out in my career is that I really enjoyed designing fashions, illustrating fashions. I had an aptitude for that. The part I wasn't fond of was that you then have to learn how to make patterns and cut, make your own patterns and cut the clothing and finish it. And I found that sewing wasn't really <laughs> part of my repertoire. I didn't really get into the sewing. My artistic journey has been very varied and very exciting, actually, it never stops. Uh, even when I wasn't drawing and painting, when I moved to New York City, we got into design, fashion design, really, of accessories, forward fashion accessories that we created, my sister and I, we invented <laughs> ways and um, domes, you know, helmets, and we did belts and scarves and jewelry, and, and it was a very exciting learning period. And we used a lot of materials. We put a lot of stuff together, and we took it to the to the um, the accessory shows and so on, and we sold into Macy's and Fiorucci and outside of New York into stores right across to California. We, <laughs> we did a lot of work. <laughs> I came back here and I moved to the countryside, I moved to St. Anne, and I started all over again in a completely different realm. I brought what I learned about making uh, jewelry, earrings, bracelets, and all of that, but then I translated it into a Caribbean um, style. Painting for me now is much broader than just the brush and paint. I really I'm a mixed media person. I like experimenting with everything. Everything from clay to cardboard, you know, found objects, disposables. And I've taken it into a wide variety of subjects, really, because I do um, Jamaica scapes, which can be mountains, seascapes, urban. And I like to make those things up out of found materials and recycled materials. And I add the text. I love the graffiti from street art. So I always incorporate that into it somehow, the signs you see around, things like that. I've had several, you know, shows, some solo, some group. I, I enter all the local um, Ligony Art Festival, the Kingston on the Edge Festival, the, the National Visual Arts Competition. I, I try to keep on the calendar for all these things because it gives you deadlines and it gives you motivation to get the work done. So the second time I entered the National Visual Arts Competition, which is sort of a suggestion of an of a artistic friend, and the second time I entered, I won the first place jury prize in 2013 for sort of overall favorite piece. The piece was actually one of those urban scapes, and it was called Grand Spen Garden, 
and it was just one of those little shop fronts on Grand Spen Road that had canna lilies and signs about landscaping and selling fresh fish. <laughs> and it was a whole mixture of things on one little shop. And I, those things appealed to me. And so I find I like to record these um, um, little commercial spots and life on the street. But I never put people in them. That's the strange thing about it is I actually never include people, but I always have a narrative of people with the signs, the signage. I think the Jamaican part of me is huge in the artwork because um, I'm completely inspired by everything about Jamaica. You know, it's the topography, the culture, the color, the shape, the light, the, the plants, the people, everything, the music, absolutely everything. I was inspired to have this particular exhibition called International She. It's a celebration of International Women's Day, March 8th. So I opened it on March 8th. International Women's Day is also my birthday <laughs> every year. So it's a special, it's a special day for me. And this time I got it into my head that I had a lot of pieces that included women. And when I put it, pulled it all together, I discovered I had more than 50 pieces that involved women in different media over the years. So that's how it became this show was born out of that. And at the same time, because it started with the ladies from my art school days and the vintage portfolio behind me here is a vintage portfolio in the 60s in London. So I pulled from that and went right around as a timeline into New York, back to Jamaica, back into fine art to the present. And then I discovered, putting it all together here, that my, my, my beginnings in this sort of art, um, art school fashion ventures, which manifested in New York in actual fashion accessories, is now turning up at this time for me in Jamaica in my collages. I'm now mad for collage. What's coming out of that is a kind of fashion goddess, which I think Jamaican women are fashion goddesses. And I really revel in all the various types of women and faces and the things we wear. And um, coming through the ages to this very contemporary Jamaican woman who is, um, you know, there's a new thing going on and I just like to capture it. A lot of my work has found its way by itself or by some magic means of transportation. My work has spread now quite a long distance around, from California to Canada, you know, America, East Coast to Europe, to Ireland, Scotland, Israel. I should have been in Israel. A bit from each section, from the vintage portfolio, I'm quite fond of my flapper girls, um, which was like a a fluid and fun fashion drawing illustration, uh, which I enjoyed doing at the period. stones, the jam rocks. I really spent a lot of years actually and a lot of stones pulling these faces, not so much putting faces on rocks as I am finding faces in stones and I love the texture of the stone because it's sort of like skin and I paint most of them with my fingers rather than brushes. I push around the paint on it so it's a more manipulated type of work. Maybe the fine parts are done with a brush in the end but most of the faces are found by pushing the paint around on the stone. And then when they're done, I like to photograph them myself on a millstone or on concrete or gravel, any type of stone that I can find as a background. And uh, that's how I photograph them and have them printed on good paper, <laughs> good ink, you know, so they last. And that's called, the, those are the jam rocks.
I have a port two portraits of my mother to whom the show is dedicated, Evie Burke, very alpha female. And I have her um, painted, well, there were early paintings of mine, very early, meaning to say when I started back to fine art. I have a portrait of her at 40, which I took from a little black and white um, passport photograph and made into a painting in pasta style, which means I painted with a paint scraper. I'm not really fond of brushes. <laughs> I like tools. <laughs> then I did another portrait of her at 90 with dementia in that same impasta style. I did them more or less at the same time. So, but there's a 50 year gap between these two faces of my mother. And then, um, above the window over there is a tribute to my friend Annabelle of Proudlock, who owned Harmony Hall, was an artist as well. And um, that was done on her passing. As she passed, I did this portrait of her set in her setting, so it's a bit of a seascape. And I used bits and pieces from her memorial program. I just used everything, tissue, twigs, uh, cutouts. I put her dog, her cat, bits and pieces of her life, and I wrote on it. Because text and texture are my two driving forces. And whatever the subject matter or the materials, it's text and texture is the, uh, the underlying theme. Because I started from the vintage portfolio in the 60s with a life class at Horsey College of Art that I attended, and then I, I followed a timeline around the room. So I went from the 60s in, in uh, London to New York in the 80s, back to Jamaica, and around to the present time. So there is, it, it, it ends up being a 50-year retrospective. 